what's going on guys so this is going to be my review for episode three of season six of the walking dead entitled thank you i am going to preface this by saying spoilers there is a fuckload of spoilers that i am going to talk about right now if you do not want to be spoiled on this whatsoever do not watch this okay this I'm I'm going to spoil everything. So if you do not want spoilers, do not watch this video. Hit pause. Go watch the episode. The episode just finished up about 15 minutes ago, and uh, for reasons I will talk about in this episode, I actually needed about 15 minutes to just calm down. Uh, but there are a ton of spoilers here. So first off, this was a very death-centric episode. Um, last week's was even more so but the thing with last week's episode which was uh what was last week's episode entitled last week's episode was entitled jss the difference between this episode and jss is that with jss nobody that i actually knew died i didn't recognize a single person the only person who i actually recognized was holly because she is an actual comic book character um in this episode, we saw the deaths of a lot of people. And yeah, a lot of them were red shirts. They were Alexandrians. They were characters that I've seen a handful of times. But to me, seeing them a handful of times still made me feel some connection when they died. Um, we also had some, uh, some big events go on in this episode. So the first event is that the herd is continuing its way to Alexandria. Several of our Alexandrian friends have ended up injured because of the uh, the rough terrain. Some of those people died. Uh, Annie was one. She first showed up with Heath's group um, in the first episode of the season in one of the little flashback sections. Uh, she, she died. She twisted her ankle or broke her ankle. She did something with her ankle, and uh, she ended up dying later on in the episode. So the herd is still continuing towards Alexandria. Which, I'm actually really enjoying that portion of the episode. The fact that the last three episodes have actually been very closely interlinked. Almost to where it's, uh... It's running concurrently. So, like, we have episode one happens, and then episode two happens at about the same time that episode one starts to happen. And then episode three happens just, like, halfway through episode two. And so it's, like, it's starting to time itself. Uh, we had uh, the group split up. I believe right at the beginning of the episode, the group split up. Rick went to uh, to go get the RV to try to lead more walkers back on path. And the others tried to make their way back home, but they're not doing so good at doing that because uh, none of them really knows the way, except for uh, a couple of the Alexandrians, who they start dropping like flies early. I think maybe that's what Rick meant when he said, you know, they're going to die eventually. They uh, They did not last long. Now for the uh, the crux of the episode, we had some some big uh, some character uh, conflicts between Heath and Michonne that I actually really enjoyed, because Heath has been for the most part pretty sheltered in Alexandria, and Michonne has not. And seeing them kind of come to terms or come come to uh, come to clash with each other, and then eventually Heath. By the end of the episode, Michonne says something along the lines of him because he keeps saying like I know what it feels like, and Michonne goes until you're covered in blood and you don't know whether it's yours or your friends or a walkers or the people you're fighting you don't know what it's actually like to make hard decisions uh by the end of the episode that definitely comes true he actually looks his, at his own reflection in the water and i think he kind of starts to have that realization that hey these guys that have survived out in the world for so long might actually know what they're doing um now for the part that i i absolutely dread this is this one this one part has made me probably the most upset I have been with a TV show in a very 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 long time. And that's why I'm a little bit more quiet and more reserved with this this video than I usually am with some of my other ones. Um so we saw two two character deaths here that actually impacted me. It the first one really impacted me and the second one it it hit me right in the feels with everything it had. Um so Glenn and Nicholas are they're trying to set up a plan to lure more walkers to the town 
to keep them from getting to Alexandria. And so they're going to set a building on fire, and then they get to the building that they're going to set on fire, and they find out it's already burnt down. Um, they end up getting trapped on top of a dumpster. And throughout the episode, Nicholas has kind of been freezing up, and Glenn's always been there to kind of break him out of it and to teach him, like, hey, the guy that you were before we arrived here is not the guy that you are now. Um, so they're trapped up on this dumpster. Nicholas freezes up again. Glenn kind of snaps him out of it. And we have a suicide. Um, Nicholas puts the gun to his head, tells Glenn thank you, and uh, pulls the trigger. And kind of falls on top of Glenn. It drags him off of the dumpster at the very least. I feel like it's an actual death for Glenn. Um, Nicholas obviously definitely died. He took a bullet to the brain. He's not going to survive that. Um, everyone everyone has been like, oh, well, you know, the way it's positioned, it might not, you know, they, the walkers might have been eating Nicholas. Well, the thing is that there's so much Nicholas to eat before they get to Glenn. The fact that um, Glenn is yelling, screaming, he's incredibly upset because it's Glenn. It's Glenn. He's he's such a good guy. Like, I I personally I really enjoy seeing the fucked up people on this show. I love seeing Rick be fucked up. I love seeing the governor. I love seeing um, just all these characters that are so incredibly screwed up because you know before the world ended they were never like that. Glenn is exactly like he was before the world ended, and uh, that's the thing that I love about Glenn. And I I really feel like. That's still it for Glenn. Um, Talking Dead is going on right now. I can't watch it. Not right now. I still need some time to process. It's part of the reason I'm doing this video, so I can talk things out a little bit. Um, process things a little bit. Uh, this was this was a rough one. And I had been spoiled previously. But I know that TV shows sometimes release intentional spoilers in order to kind of fake viewers out. Oh, this is going to happen, and then it doesn't happen. It happened. It's happened with The Walking Dead about a half a dozen times. I can count. Um, so, yeah, it's... It's it's really it's really difficult um, just to deal with this. I, I One of my friends posted on Facebook, he's like, damn this show, and I was like, I think I speak for everybody when I say fuck this show and everything it stands for. <laughs> Um, so yeah, and I, I think even, yeah, I even still have Talking Dead's little quiz thing going on right now, cause, uh, I just heard the ding, it's, if, if it were not for the fact that we're supposed to get, a, well, we are getting a 90 minute episode next week, that was confirmed in the, uh, the preview, like, next time on The Walking Dead, and we are confirmed that it is Morgan. It is a Morgan flashback episode. Um, if not for that, then I probably would be taking a week or two off from this show. It is really, really difficult. Um, if Glenn ma manages to make it out of this, I will, be, I will be both happy and pissed at the same time. Happy because I love Glenn. I love Stephen Yoon. I think that's how you pronounce his name, or Young. I love him. He's an amazing actor. Um, but at the same time, plot armor, it's... It's a thing, and I don't like it to be a thing. Um, this is supposed to be a more realistic zombie show, and having Glenn just survive would seem kind of like a cheat to me. Um, so, yeah. That is my... Re this, this is one of those episodes... It is really difficult when a TV show kills off somebody that you love to be like, oh, well, that show gets a, a, a 9 out of 10 or something like that. Um because you kind of hate the TV show at that point. And I'm, I'm very upset with The Walking Dead right now. I'm, I'm, very, I'm very hurt. I'm very upset. Um, at the same time, this episode is going to go down as one of the best in The Walking Dead, I think. It, it had a couple of minor irks. But the fact that it... I felt the realism of the fact of, hey, not everyone's getting out alive. Not everyone got out alive. In fact, barely anybody got out alive. And I would like to say this. This is a show which has, for the last five years, been constantly um, insulted for being uh, offensive to its black characters. Oh, yeah, well, we'll just kill off the black guy and bring somebody new in, you know, oh, so on and so forth. 
if you guys notice, we had four survivors out of our group. Four total survivors. We had Rick, and then we had Michonne, Heath, and I don't know what the other guy's name is. The guy, uh, he was injured throughout the episode. Uh, all three African-American characters. So, you know, it, it is what it is. I think that that kind of shuts down that whole racism argument. I didn't find there was racism argument to begin with. Because they've killed just as many, you know, white blonde girls than they've killed black people. And nobody gives a crap about that. But uh, if I had to rate this episode, I would probably rate it... Everybody does like 9 out of 10 or like 4 out I'm I'm going to do a percentage. I want to give this, this episode a 95%. It is a solid A episode. I don't think it's as good as last week's episode. Last week's episode was an A plus for me. It was, you know, 100%. It was one of the few episodes in The Walking Dead that actually jump scared me, and I don't get jump scared. So, uh, I, w I would give this one a 95%. And, uh, it's been on a slow upward rise throughout the season. Um, it's it's going to be very interesting to see where they go. Not for episode 4, but for episode 5, because I feel like that's going to be the next episode that actually takes place in this timeline, since next week's is, uh, I guess, the rise of Morgan, you want to call it. Uh, but, yeah, this, this was a very, very rough episode to deal with. It's one of those episodes that I'm probably going to be dealing with for a while. Uh, and, uh, all I have to say is, you know, to Steven, you, if, if you survive, man, I, I love you. You're an amazing actor, but if for whatever reason Glenn is gone and gone for good, uh, rest in peace, Glenn, you were the best character, one of the best characters on the show, and you really were the humanity of the group. With that being said... I will catch you guys next time. Tommy out.